Drivers, start your engines! This is MRN Motorsports Monday, presented by Outback Steakhouse and Hercules Tires. One full hour of news, interviews, and opinion about the past weekend's racing action. Pace car is up. Now here are your hosts, Woody Kane and Joey Mike. Green flag, green flag. Here we are again, Motorsports Monday after week two. You like that number, two spotter. Week two of NASCAR Goes West, the Western Swing. And shock, Kevin Harvick wins at Phoenix. It is his eighth victory at that track and his sixth in the last eight tries. I'm Woody Kane, joined by Joey Meyer once again. You guys didn't have the day that you were looking for, and a lot of people were jumping off the four-car bandwagon to start, especially on Friday when practice seemed to go okay, but qualifying didn't. But then in the end, they paid it off, and what a finish. Our second photo finish of the year. See, there's that number again. The number two is is in the house for sure. We go three times out west. Uh, We were able to come home after Phoenix. We were stayed out. Uh, after Vegas, brought home our trophy from Vegas. By the way, there you go. How about that? By the way, we got prop. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, in order to beat the best, you have to race the best, and Kevin Harvick is the best. I think somebody on the show last week, when we previewed Phoenix, mm-hmm. may have mentioned who was that. May have been on. Was Face it the talk, guy on the little screen? The, screen, the little guy, <laughs> exactly. May have mentioned yeah. that Kevin Harvick was going to win the race. Uh, well, that's not like going out on a limb. Now, come on, let's be honest. But what we don't understand is it's such a driver's track mm-hmm. that it doesn't matter with car and setup and crew chief and manufacturers he just knows how to drive the track Mm -hmm. and the best way i can explain it is back in the day we had road course ringers Mm -hmm. they knew how to drive the track it wasn't that they had a better car yeah kevin harvick is a phoenix raceway ringer he came up there yes he grew up there it's his home as close to his home track as possible he's a phoenix raceway ringer it's the Mm -hmm. best way i can explain it he has a unique way of driving a car and the reason he doesn't qualify all that well is he doesn't make one lap very fast. He puts together a string of laps that are precise, easy on his car, long run durations, and he just wears you out. He really does. Here's how it sounded. You look in the menu there that we've got from Outback. We want to welcome Outback Steakhouse uh, aboard the program, and what a great week to do that after the four-car wins out in Phoenix uh, to Motorsports Monday. Justin Allgaier is going to be coming up a little bit later on. He's top four in the points, top four finish at Phoenix as well. Tim Fita with a spotter for Kevin Harvick is going to be along, and then on track, off track comes up, and you won't believe what Joey has to tell you on track track off track for that but first before we dive into all that let's hear what it sounded like yesterday when Kevin Harvick goes to victory lane in Phoenix to finish the way you finish there has to be spectacular from the driver's seat what was it like uh, I felt like it was way closer than it should should have been I knew on the restart that we were going to have our hands full with with guys and in a way that the rubber picked up and would sling off the tires I was saving gas so I didn't get my tires clean enough I got through one and two and felt like I was okay uh, but I'd raced the 19 enough today to, to know that his strong point was rolling through the center in three and four, and that was our weakest spot. So I was fully expecting to get hit, uh, got hit, and, and just wanted to make sure that I could uh, get it pointed and get back in the throttle the best that I could to, to, to ha- at least have a chance off the corner. So uh, it wasn't by very much, but all in all, our uh, Jimmy John's uh, Bush team uh, did a great job today to keep this car on the track. There you go, Kevin Harvick explaining. And the one quote that stuck with me that I heard Kevin say from over the weekend, you know, you go out and everybody pays a lot of attention early in the weekend to practice times and who's quick in practice. And I don't think folks have an appreciation for what, teams are trying to accomplish early on you're trying to get down a good lap in case we rain because you go back to practice times to set the field later on you're working more on race setup but Harvick said at one point along the weekend that what they work on is not trying to put down necessarily the fastest lap but trying to be fast the longest and I think that's critical that's it We, we just talked about that it's being able to wear you out being able to pass traffic and lap cars without being held up how your car comes off the corner at a lower line. Anybody can run, or not anybody, but guys will go out and run faster laps in the clear, but then get the lap traffic and not be able to get by them and allow your competitors to catch up behind you. But Harvick has the ability to not only run consistently fast laps, but maneuver through traffic while doing that. He absolutely does. One of the issues that came up during the race yesterday was what is being described as tire 
issues, and that's not necessarily the case. Let's get uh, a feel for what some of the guys were saying about tires at Phoenix. You learn anything uh, today for tomorrow's race? I did. I learned a lot about the tire. Uh, this is obviously a different tire than what we've run here in the past with the Xfinity cars, but it's the same tire we're going to run tomorrow on the Sprint Cup cars. So uh, I learned some things that, uh, that this car was doing today because I had to run it hard the whole time. I couldn't take care of my tires, so I really felt the tire degradation and the fall off that it gave and, and what all the characteristics were and how they changed throughout the run. And so tomorrow with more horsepower and less downforce, it's going to make it all that much more interesting. And cars will be sliding around, that's for sure. Everybody's going to get their money's worth trying to move around the racetrack and, uh, and make sure they can find a groove that their car works in. And sometimes the apron is the way to go, too. We saw that today. Now, that was Kyle Busch after winning the Xfinity race on Saturday. Glenn Jarrett asked him, did he learn anything? And typically, guys say, no, nah, the Xfinity cars don't really translate that well to what we're doing on Sunday. But specifically there, he was talking about the tire itself and what he learned because both the Xfinity and Cup Series were running the same tire, and it was a different tire from what they'd been running in years past. Different tire from years past, both series on the same tire, which is unusual from the past two weeks of our low downforce package. Uh, the Xfinity car and the Cup car had had two different tires uh, for the Cup low downforce, but we ran the same tire. Kyle felt like he was able to educate himself on what the tire did. We didn't have tire problems. We had tire failures, but they were induced by bad handling race cars mm -hmm. due to the low downforce. You have less downforce. You're re re uh, relying more on mechanical grip, and if your mechanical grip isn't equal to all four tires, it puts a little more pressure on one of the tires. To compensate. To compensate. Yeah. And you're trying to get into the corner a little bit deeper. So we saw a lot of heat-generated failures from the brakes. If you ride your, your passenger car and you're driving around, you just put your foot on the brake. In about 30 seconds, it's going to be glowing red lava hot. Your street tires won't last much longer. Mm -hmm. The race cars were exceeding 300 degrees for several, several laps, yeah. multiple laps during a run. And we saw runs that fuel runs would go well over 65, 70 laps. The tires simply weren't lasting that under that heat uh, intensity. Yeah, they really weren't. And one of the things that uh, Rodney Childers, Kevin Harvick's crew chief, mentioned uh, in post-race was that at one of the pit stops, they took off one of the tires and said it was 300, or the wheel was 315 degrees. That's got to go somewhere. It has to go somewhere, and it's coming from the brake ho uh, rotor, the hub. It ex goes outward to the wheel. The wheel gets the tire hot. Tyra says, I can't deal with it anymore, and we saw five of those failures yesterday. Here's what it sounded like with some of the guys on track at Phoenix having those issues. Trouble at turn number three. One car up and into the outside wall. It is a single car incident involving Ryan Newman. Not sure if something broke or if there was a tire issue upon entry into turn number three. Trouble up in turn number three. Another hard shot up into the outside wall. A single car incident. Paul Menard for the second time this afternoon. Richard Childress Racing has an issue here in turn three. Far Trouble also. turn one. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Right front tire down. Pounds the outside. Safer barrier. Kyle Ricky, you were watching it. Right rear tire down for Brad Keselowski just at the exit of the dog leg a half a lap ago and then now we have a car up into the outside wall it's Casey Kane rushes the outside wall only car involved and again it may be another tire issue as that car shot up into the wall just a moment ago here in turn four what is your do you, what is what's your tire do you like the what's the tire what is the issue of your tire <laughs> One of the callers on our fan forum hotline there will give you that number as we go along so you can play along with us as well. But a lot of talk about the tires, and as we mentioned, it was the heat from braking trying to compensate for handling issues that then translated. Explain for folks, if you will, when they when they say melt the bead. Okay, so first of all, all of those the, the vehicles and teams that had problems mm -hmm. were handling poorly. They weren't top five cars or lead lap cars, mm -hmm. which meant those guys were railing really good, handling really good. When you try to compensate for your car not handling good means you're driving around a corner and it feels really good, and it doesn't, doesn't do that, you drive into the corner harder. You drive into the quarter faster. Well, in order for me to get stopped and go the other direction, I have to use more brake. That friction on the tire or on the brake is creating more heat. That heat radiates out to the wheel. The wheel goes to the bead. The bead is the inside of the tire that is attached to the wheel, because the part that makes the physical contact, contact with the metal with the wheel. wheel. Yeah. So it's a direct transfer of heat. It essentially melts. This is a rubber piece we're and talking about. And then the about. air comes right out and boom. That's, that's yeah. exactly right. So it's just a tire failure due to a bad handling problem. Goodyear did an amazing job on this mm -hmm. tire. It wore out just like we wanted to. We saw new tires and no tires and two tire options, which guys like to mm -hmm. have. We simply had bad handling cars that caused the excess of heat 
which caused the failure. Which in and of itself is not a problem because that's what the drivers and teams have been asking for. Yeah. They want to put more of it back in the driver's hands yes. to let their skill show through rather than it being so dependent on air on the nose, locked down, mashed down into the track where you're holding it wide open lap after lap after lap and you can't get by anybody. Exactly right. The, uh, the drivers that, that had their car handling the best were able to go the fastest for a whole fuel run, and we saw drivers like Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick and Carl Edwards were the top three guys for most of the afternoon be able to run up front uh, without any issues whatsoever. All right. We got to take a quick time out here on Motorsports Monday. But as we do, we want to remind you folks that since Kevin Harvick did what he did, a top 10 finish, don't forget to race in the Outback Steakhouse today for a free, that's free, free. Bloomin' Onion. It means you don't Kevin pay for Harvick it finished in the top 10. That's Outback Steakhouse done right. When we come back, we'll shift gears a little bit and talk Xfinity Series racing with Justin Allgaier. Stick around. This is MRN Motorsports Monday. In the Outback, we think the best part about racing is the noise, the engine, the pits, and a Kevin Harvick top 10 finish. Especially a Kevin Harvick top 10 finish. Mm. That's because if Kevin Happy Harvick, driver of the number four Chevrolet, places in the top ten in today's race, there's free Bloomin' Onions this Monday. So you'll have a happy Bloomin' Monday. Only at Outback Steakhouse. <laughs> Valid with any purchase. One per table. Participation may vary. Registered trademarks used with permission. Leading the race in innovation, Freightliner Trucks designed the Cascadia Evolution to lower your real cost of ownership. When powered by the integrated Detroit powertrain with a DT12 automated manual transmission and intelligent powertrain management, the Cascadia Evolution can achieve up to a 13% fuel efficiency increase over the first generation EPA 2010 compliant Cascadia model, keeping you on the road and in the race longer. Learn more about the Cascadia Evolution at FreightlinerTrucks.com. Freightliner Trucks, run smart. Don't miss the first ever Country 500, the Great American Music Fest at Daytona International Speedway. Memorial Day weekend. Join it's Luke Bryan, Jason Aldean, Kid Rock, hey, Lady Antebellum, Florida Georgia Line, Willie Nelson, and many more for three awesome days and nights of music, camping, and more on the infield of the World Center of Racing. Visit Country500.com for more information. Hey, this is Joey Logano. You're listening to MRN Motorsports Monday with Joey Meyer and Woody Kane. This show still exists? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think he took a little too much pleasure in that. That's that's. I don't know if he was insulting us or what. He's one of the few people that don't listen to this show. Really? Yeah. Well, he needs to get yeah, on the program. It's then. worldwide. Malcolm. Yeah. He's actually been on the program. Yes, Malcolm. No, Joey. I'm talking about Malcolm. It's I know you're worldwide. talking about Malcolm from it's England. Wor yeah, worldwide. Joey's yeah. from Connecticut. That's not worldwide. That's not far enough away. It's just for us. one of the one of the outer states. Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of guys who have been doing a lot of traveling lately, one of them joins us on the guest line now. Justin Allgaier drove the number seven Brant Professional Agriculture Chevrolet to a fourth place finish at Phoenix. He is fourth in the standings, right in the thick of it, and he is on the guest line now. Justin, congratulations on a strong run, but man, Kyle Busch got you guys again. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, you know, it was, a, it was a great day for us. We, we unloaded off the truck in Phoenix and felt like a, as a group collectively, we, we, you know, starting with a new team, you always have to kind of learn your, your team and learn your crew chief. And so we felt like when we unloaded off the truck in Phoenix, that was the best we had been as far as going to the racetrack, how we felt like we needed a race. And, and we felt good all the way through the race. You know, at the end of the day, we were uh, we were the best non-gift car. <laughs> Unfortunately, there were three of them in front of us, and, and Kyle Busch, uh, you know, stole the show again. But you know, I feel like I feel like we got closer. At, at least this weekend for for us, we we got a lot closer, and we learned a lot of things throughout the course of the race. And and so I think as we keep moving forward here and keep learning with these Xfinity Series cars, you know, we'll only get better and better as we go. Justin, it's been documented uh, a couple of struggles over there at the Cup Series in a, in a team that continues to struggle with a high-caliber uh, Cup driver in your X seat uh, now. Uh, back in 2010, Brad came over to Team Penske and had you guys as a teammate, and one of the things he said was his confidence kept being higher because he was successful in the Xfinity Series. Do you find that happening to yourself right now, starting the season, being able to run good, that your confidence gets energized really quick? Well, I mean, I think it's, it's definitely without question, you know, when you can go to the racetrack and you can be competitive and, and run up front and contend for wins on a weekly basis, it, it elevates you um, a, a, as a person without a doubt. Now, 
you know, do I want to see them struggle in the Cup side? No, absolutely not. You know, I was very hopeful that, that there would be some things that would change around this year that, that would help, um, you know, my old car have, have success. And, and unfortunately, it, it you know, they're, they're still having some, some struggles. Um, but at the same time, you know, I feel I feel like for me, uh, you know, I, I started racing when I was when I was five to, to go out and to win races and to be competitive and and that's just the position I put myself in and, and there are other people and, and I'm very blessed to do what I love to do and there are other people that that you know go to the racetrack every week and, and they don't necessarily feel like they have to go and compete and, and to, to be competitive to, to feel like they've accomplished something and I've just never been that way. I always wanted to go to the racetrack and be and be competitive and so for me this is uh this is a much needed wake up and, and able to go to the racetrack and be competitive and Junior Motorsports has done a great job. I mean they're a great group of people. They're a great great um uh, just great family. You know, I think that's the one thing about it is is that it's really a family family run race team. It it feels like a family there and, and for myself that that was the perfect fit. And, and just to be clear, we're chatting with Justin Allgaier, who drove the Brant Chevrolet to a fourth-place finish in the Xfinity Series at Phoenix on Saturday. Uh, you and I have talked about this before, but I wanted fans to hear it. I know, I know what your feeling is on it, but I think it's important for fans to hear. We keep hearing all the time, oh, boy, the, the Cup guys are coming down and ruining everything in the Xfinity Series, and we wish they couldn't, we wish they wouldn't, but you and almost every other driver without fail that I've talked to says, nope, bring them on, right? Absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, all of us feel the same way that, that obviously Kyle has done a great job, um, but it's not just Kyle. There's there's other guys. I mean, Joey, you and Brad have done a great job. Um, you know, Kevin Harvick, and, and I could list 10,000 names of, of Cup guys that have come over and done a great job in the Xfinity series. But what that has done is that has elevated the Xfinity drivers to the level that I feel like is, is better and better every time we go on the racetrack. You know, you look at some of the the non-companion races, it's still the same guys and the same cars going for, for race wins and, and to be competitive. Uh, it's just minus a few people. And, and so for me, I like the, the competitiveness of it. I, I, I like the, the push that, that the Cup guys bring. You know, when I was in the Cup Series, I saw it firsthand, you know, that there's there's now 40, but uh, last year there were 43 guys that, that at any given time I felt like were talented enough to go win races and win championships in the right equipment and in the right car. And, and so for me, um, you know, switching back down to the Xfinity series, I feel just as strongly now as I did, as I did before I went to the cup series. And, and, uh, you know, we've got a great series. We, we've got a great uh, group of guys that, that run every week. And, uh, you know, I, I look forward to, to keep racing with the cup guys that, that want to come over and run. All right. Well, we show up in Phoenix. We've got a ton of practice on Friday. What did, uh, issues did you and Jason Burdett have to work through? Well, Unfortunately, uh, we we just we were laughing about this this morning. You know, we had three and a half hours of practice, and really, we started the race almost exactly how we unloaded off the truck. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's a testament to those guys. I mean, to, to be able to unload and and to, uh, to to be that close right off right off the bat was was really cool. Um, you know, we we fought a few things. We fought the track changing, obviously. First of all, you know, as, as the course of three and a half hours of practice went and cut practice and. Uh, you know, cup qualifying and all those different things. I, I feel like we we fought the track majority of the time. You know, the track uh, got a lot slicker as, as the weekend went on, and and so you know we made good adjustments and felt like that that throughout the course of the race that the track changed as well. And we were definitely you know on our toes trying to keep up with with the track. I feel like for me Phoenix is a, is a fun place. I feel like it, it's been one of those racetracks that from the very first laps that I made in the Xfinity Series there all the way up until now. I've always felt comfortable and, and felt like I could go be competitive. And so I think that, that that definitely helps when you go to a racetrack and you have confidence in yourself. But uh, to, to, to be behind the wheel and, and to, to know we were as close as we were right off the truck, I, I felt even more confident going into the weekend. And obviously, like I said, we got a little work to do to catch the Gibbs cars, but, but it's not just us that are scratching our heads. It's, it's all, you know, 36 other other competitors that are you know trying to figure out what, what, they're doing that that has, has made them so fast. 
Chatting with Justin Allgaier, drives the number seven Brandt Professional Agriculture Chevrolet at Junior Motorsports, fourth at Phoenix, fourth in the standings. I want to ask you a little bit about nuts and bolts of the race. We talked before you came on about the new tire that was there for both the Xfinity and the Cup Series, and with all the practice you had, you guys wound up at one point, and you weren't alone. A handful of guys did this, took two tires toward the middle of the race, and it worked for 10, 15 laps or so before new tires got by, and then it kind of leveled off. Tell us about the call to take two and how you felt that went. Yeah, Jason Red had a great job in, in calling the race, and, and we took two uh, on our on our mid part of the race, as you, as you mentioned, and, and I felt like it was the right call. You know, for us, uh, track position was, was important. We got good track position out of it, and we were able to maintain. Obviously, the, the, the Gibbs cars on four tires were able to get by us. A couple of them were at least. And we settled right in there. Um, I think at that point we were we were in third on two tires for the for the duration of that run, and and I felt really good about where we were going to be at. And unfortunately, on the last run, I, I think ours worked so well that, that the Gibbs guys noticed, and they took two on the last stop. Had the race played out differently, I feel like we we made the the perfect call. Mm-hmm. Uh, had there been a caution at the end of the race, which predominantly there always is one at, at least towards the end of the, of the race at Phoenix, and so I. I felt like we made the right call, and unfortunately, it just it just bit us a little bit at the end with with the Gibbs guys being able to take two. But but all in all, I mean, I I felt like the tire was was great. You know, as we got through the course of the weekend, the the track widened out like it like it has in the past. We haven't seen it the last few years, but you know, the track widened out. We were able to get a distinct second groove uh, for sure in three and four. I even ran the top and one and two a couple of times and and made it work to to my advantage. So you know, I feel like. As, as race car drivers, that's what we want. That's what we're searching for. And the balance was good because I feel like consistency was there over the course of the weekend with the tires. And, and I feel like Cup and Xfinity both, uh, I don't, you know, other than a few failures on, on Sunday, I feel like everybody made it to the weekend and, and felt like they had a, um, you know, a good, a good tire to be on. And I feel like we're going in, in the right direction with, with where we're going with Goodyear. You know, we mentioned it a couple times, the, the Gibbs cars, you know, and you can't see me on TV, but I'm using air quotes just because it's cool to do. But there you go, do it again. There you air, go. There, air, there, there air, you go. The see Gibbs, that? The Gibbs go. cars, uh, they finish first, second, third, qualify first, second, and third for a couple of weeks in a row. As a driver, one of the things that you do is you look at the other cars, and I could almost use air quotes again. What is it you need? What, is, what do they do that's so much better than what Junior Motorsports and what Penske and what all these teams are doing? What are they doing? How do you notice it? And what kind of feedback do you give as you get out of your car and go, man, I want my car to, to do that? What is that? Well, I think, you know, there's not – I can't pinpoint one exact definitive thing that they're doing that, that's making them so fast. But, you know, one of the things that we notice is their center corner speed. You know, we always talk as drivers about we want to go – we want to carry more speed into the corner, carry more speed off the corner. And, and momentum is really what what does all of that, right? And the center of the corner is what dictates how much momentum you can carry. It dictates how fast you can get in the corner. It dictates how hard you can get off the corner. And they just carry the center of the corner extremely well. Um, you know, one of the things for us that we feel like that they're really good at or really exceptional at right now is their platform. You know, looking at the, the, the their car, the front, the back, the attitude of their car all the way through the corner, through the bumps, uh, through, you know, throughout the course of a run, you know, whether it be on, on new tires or old tires, you know, you just watch the platform of their car and it stays really, really good for what what we look at as, as being, uh, uh, you know, the optimum, I guess. Uh, how they're doing that, that's the question. You know, there, there are obviously a lot of things going on with springs and shocks and you know, having the Xfinity Series now being allowed to run bump stops uh, or bump springs, excuse me. Um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of variables in there that could change. And so I feel like for me, you know, until we get the platform and the attitude and everything the way we wanted to to have it and to stay that way, and, and then also to be able to drive it. You know, I think that's the other part. You know, we could put the car on on four uh, rods that that don't move, and and that would be optimum for you know, the, the, the attitude of the car, but then obviously it won't drive very well. So, you know, getting all of that together and figuring all of that out, I think it's is been, you know, it's been a challenge, but that's one of the biggest changes from, from 2015 to 2016 was the addition of that. And a lot of teams had to go to the drawing board over the winter, and, you know, re, redevelop front ends and front end geometry and do all these different things to, to allow the bump springs to be able to, to be ran. And, and so I think for us, it's just, learning all of that and figuring out how to get our platform where we want it. 
Heading to uh, Auto Club Speedway of Southern California next, Justin, but we got a Twitter question here for you. Zach Copeland wants to know, of all the tracks that you race in Xfinity and not necessarily in Cup, which one are you looking forward to the most this year? Uh, man, I, I got to. You. I, I have to. You. It, it, I've either got to say Road America. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I love going up there and, and the road course up there in Iowa. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking forward to going back to both of those. Uh, I, I feel like that, that you know, Neither one will disappoint from from a driver's standpoint or from a fan standpoint. So uh, I love those two racetracks rather that we get to go back there on the Xfinity schedule this year. Fantastic. Looks good. Congratulations on a strong start to the season. Look forward to seeing you out at uh, Auto Club Speedway in California and continued success, man. Thanks for the time. Thanks, guys. Always good to be on. Joey, I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed that you're in studio today. I was going to take over for you today, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll leave it alone for now. But right. uh, anytime you're out, just let me know, and I'll come, I'll come fill in hey, for you. It's a double thing, too. Whenever you need somebody in the Xfinity car to t- t- just take some warm-up laps, you know, <laughs> I do have laps around Rockingham. And see, Justin is, Justin is one of the few guys that know what it says on the side of your headset. Yeah, what does it say? Do you Ooh. know? Pop quiz. You know, you know why? I don't know because the last time I was in there, they were brand new. You hadn't even used them yet. That's right. That's right. That's right. We gave them a new set. We right. we wouldn't want to give anybody your hand me downs because no. that would be rude when you have company in the it's house. Pro- professional. Yeah. It says professional. Joey thinks that's just for him, but that's how they come. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks. Appreciate the time, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, we'll take a quick time out. When we come back, Tim Fidewa is going to join us. He is the spotter for Kevin Harvick after their big win at Phoenix yesterday. He'll tell us all about that. But on the way out, Daniel Suarez continues to lead the standings in the Xfinity Series, the first international driver to lead uh, at this stage of the season or at any stage, really, and he takes the lead in the Auto Club Speedway of Southern California. Here's what he had to say after Saturday's race in Phoenix. He's out of the Juniper Networks Toyota. Daniel, another good, strong run for you guys. You uh, needed a little bit more, it seems like, in the middle of the race. Is that right? Yeah, in the second half of the race, um, I don't know. Maybe, you know, I, I got stuck a little bit on traffic. I was trying to be over aggressive to make my way back to the front. I don't think that adjustment was, was the best. Plus, I, I touched the wall next to the four, and obviously that, that didn't help. And after that, the car was uh, a little bit too tight, uh, tighter than before. So, uh, you know, I just need to keep working, try to minimize, minimize or, uh, my mistakes and, and try to try again next week. This is MRN Motorsports Monday. Be the winner of your next family dinner. Choose Creekstone Farms Premium Black Angus Beef, proud sponsor of MRN. Act fast because while supplies last, you can get two delicious beef brisket flats for just $79.99. That's a savings of almost $30. Plus, receive free shipping with your online order of $100 or more. No coupon code required. Get first place taste with our superior quality beef and pork products, all raised and grazed in the USA. Visit us today at CreekstoneFarms.com. In the outback, we think the best part about racing is the noise, the engine, the pits, and a Kevin Harvick top 10 finish, especially a Kevin Harvick top 10 finish. Mm. That's because if Kevin Happy Harvick, driver of the number four Chevrolet, places in the top 10 in today's race, there's free Bloomin' Onions this Monday. So you'll have a happy Bloomin' Monday, only at Outback Steakhouse. Valid with any purchase, one per table. Participation may vary. Registered trademarks used with permission. It's all over at Martinsville, Virginia. Richard Petty has pulled it off. Rollback Thursday. Classic MRN race broadcast on MRN.com. Waltrip will win the track race to turn three. Earnhardt gets him. Hard into the wall goes Waltrip. Hard goes Earnhardt. Everybody else spins either way. Out of the number four corner, down to the line. Neil Bonnet is going to win. The Northwestern Bank 400. He'll beat Waltrip a two-car length. What a finish here at North Wilkesboro. Rollback Thursday. Thursdays at 1 Eastern on MRN.com. Hi, this is Austin Dillon. Now back to MRN Motorsports Monday with Joey Meyer and Woody Kane. I'll let you handle it. Remember that transmission here. Fans where you need them. Track where you want it. Here we go. They come off turn number four to see the American Ethanol green flag. You're clear. 19th pushing you. Big restart for Harvick. He's away with the lead. They're three wide. Three by one. Little run to you. Come to the white. Half back in line. White flag is flying. Kevin Harvick, Carl Edwards. They'll settle it between the two of them. Edwards is there. He looks to the outside at the entrance of turn number one. Going to the top on you. Clear by half. Through the dog leg. It's Kevin Harvick with the lead. Harvick by a car length. Here comes Carl Edwards. The two of them will settle it for the top spot. Going to the top again. 
Watch your bottom now, inside. Into turn three, Edwards to the bottom. There's contact between the top two, they are side by side. Carl Edwards to the inside, he has the advantage, but Harvick draws even again. They touch again at the start finish line. Chairman Harvick scores the win again, his eighth victory at Phoenix International Raceway. What a finish. I think he was just gonna go wherever you weren't, you know, but hell of a job there fighting him off. And he was just a little better in the bottom and I missed the bottom there. That's the way it sounded on Motor Racing Network yesterday, mixed in with the calls of the man who was in Harvick's ear for most of that race. Tim Feeder with a spotter on the roof, helped guide the number four Jimmy John Chevrolet to victory at Phoenix. And uh, before we get into that, Timmy, are you headed over to uh, Outback to get you a, a blooming onion today? I'm a little later for sure, man. I just got <laughs> up. To be honest with you. It was a long, long couple of weeks. We stayed out after uh, Vegas and done a little snowmailing, as you guys have might have reported on. Yeah, our stock guy Nook had a rough go of it, but uh, hopefully he feels better after yesterday's win. You know. Yeah. Normally we start at the beginning of the weekend and we go towards Sunday, but I have to ask right away: How long did it take for you to find out you won? <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean, Joey? I don't understand your question. <laughs> yeah, photo finish. Yeah. Yeah. No, I. you know, from our angle, we're down in turn one, which right. is unique for the spotter stand, as a lot of people don't know. And uh, so, I, you know, I thought we edged him, but I asked, I said, Rodney, did we win? Did we win? I looked up on the scoring pylon, and it had us in front, but sometimes that's not, you know, that's not accurate. So, uh, I mean, I thought it. I thought we won, but you, you just never know. And finally... Um, Rodney said, I think we got it. I think we got it. So it was it was pretty cool. That was a great finish to a great race. Sure was. And we got a little taste of it there with the, the rejoin coming out of the break. Give folks an idea of what's going through your mind and what kind of things you and Kevin are talking about in those closing laps because you stayed out. And I read where uh, Rodney had said in the past you guys had done that with success and decided to stick with it. But the difference was uh, not as many guys stayed out with you for that final run. Yeah, I think, you know, in, in you know, uh, the crew chief scan, all the other crew chiefs, of course, and engineers. And I think, I mean, I didn't know at the time, but I think the 88 had decided to stay, which gave us a little buffer. I didn't, I don't think we knew the three was staying, but we were hoping a couple more would, obviously. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, it was just us three out there and, and the 19 on fresh rights. It was, uh, it was, we knew it was going to be interesting, to say the least. He had been strong all day. I mean, he was, you know, going to take as, as good as we were at times and, and better. So, um, you know, you just you hope for the best. You know, uh, Kevin does a heck of a job at Phoenix. And, um, you know, you it's uh, it's really cool to win a race like that. But man, if if we had lost, it'd have been tough to take. So mm. I'm just glad it went our way. Yeah, absolutely. It's interesting to watch. You know, we talked, you and I talked before the race, and I said, "Be easy on us." And and you didn't go into that race with the confidence that you normally had in the past. Why is that? Well, you know, I had confidence. I always have confidence in Kevin there and Rodney. I mean, they, they bring a good car, but we struggled a little bit. It seemed like we were down, and I contributed a lot of that to a new tire. We just hadn't figured it out yet. I think uh, they went through a lot of changes and a lot of things Kevin did like and didn't like and um, just went back and forth on it. And I think it took every bit of practice that we had to get uh, our Jimmy John Chevy the way Kevin wanted it. And, and uh, even in the race, you know, we – we were back and forth a lot on changes, and, and uh, we finally got it to where uh, Rodney and Dax and all the guys got it where he needed it, and um, he could drive it the way he wanted it to there. Because he's, he's looking for a feel there at Phoenix. Once you get it to him, boy, he, he does a hell of a job with it. Chatting with Tim Feeder with a spotter for Kevin Harvick after his big win at Phoenix on Sunday uh, in the Jimmy John Chevrolet. But, Tim, one of the things that Joey and I were talking about before you came on was uh, Harvick practically grew up at Phoenix, knows that track as well or better than anyone, and you mentioned looking for that feel. The quote that I keep going back to that, that Kevin mentioned uh, in post-race was people look at look at lap times and speeds and practice and all that and he said that is not the thing that we're looking for we're looking for how long can you stay that fast when you're trying to work through a practice session give folks an idea of how you're you're working through that rather than trying to lay down just one hot lap well i mean that's the thing i, I think he just knows that you know the the, the race typically goes you know you, you get a lot of 40 50 lap runs there and uh the drop off is usually pretty great after about 30 laps and um if you can just keep your car consistent and keep running through that and you know we've seen it yesterday even at times when kevin was you know not happy with the car our drop off wasn't as much as a lot of the other cars but uh i give credit to the you know the 19 
88, there was a lot of a lot of cars that uh, really had about the same uh, same race car we did as far as setup looked like out there. And uh, we uh, we knew once we got in clean air, we could. I think it helped us, and it was it was easier for Kevin to tell Rodney what he needed for the end of the race. And uh, hey, it worked out for us. You know, at a place like Phoenix, Timmy, does Kevin still rely on the spotter as much? Less or the same amount as any other track? I don't know. I think he. I think he relies on the spotter quite a bit. I mean, um, you know that dog leg, Joey. I don't have to tell you, it's tricky, man. There's, there's, we're at a weird angle there. Um, you know, we passed a few cars there on the bottom, and you're trying to clear up. And you need to be all the way against the wall before you head into three to get the right line. And a couple times, I, I man, I almost said clear, and and uh, the guy was still there by just a, an inch of a nose. And, a lot can happen there, man. That's a, that's a tough spot. It's hard for us to see down off of four. So uh, as far as lines and stuff, I, you know, I, I you'd see the outside line move for a while, so I'd have him move up. And at times it worked for us, at times it didn't. But he really searched around a lot yesterday, more so than uh, I've seen him search in a couple years past. Yeah, no, no question about it. Hey, one thing, we wanted to uh, play a clip and get you to listen to it and tell us what you think about it on the other end. It was uh, from uh, Carl Edwards' post-race talking about those closing laps. Check this out. We're down here with Carl Edwards. Carl, you missed it by that much, and I'm holding my fingers really close together. Describe the last lap. Well, we were faster. We had tires. Dave Rogers made a great call. And I got down there, and um, I was going to go around the top, and he moved up, and so I went to the bottom, and I thought, I'm going to move them out of the way, but I didn't want to wreck them. I mean, those guys earned their spot, and I moved them, and it just was a drag race, and uh, we just lost it. But it was just just an awesome race. We had an opportunity to win it. Before that final caution, we didn't have an opportunity. So um, that's going to be a tough one to swallow, but but it, it really was a lot of fun. Coming down the stretch, you guys banged a couple times. Can you just describe what you both were doing or what you were doing, what your part of it was? Well, so I had a, I had a run on him, so he banged my door. And then as he was going by, I thought, man, I better hit him, try to slow him down. But I, I wasn't far enough in front of him when I hit him, so it didn't, didn't make much of a difference. But, um, man, just fun. So how about that? Uh, here, here you guys are thumping and bumping like old school days coming to the checkers. What's going through your mind, and what are you telling Kevin at that point? It's pretty much out of your hands, right? Yeah, man, after the first, I think the last thing I said, I think he's going to go topside on you. And then uh, Kevin, actually, after the race, I talked to him, and he said he missed the bottom. He was, you know, I think he was, he heard me say topside, so he probably was thinking maybe he better guard it a little bit. And he said he just missed the bottom, so that opened up the door on the bottom for Carl. And once he got, I said inside, I don't think I said another word. I mean, there's not much you can do there. There, um, I knew Kevin knew would do what he had to do. I, I just think it's pretty cool. Carl race is clean there, and. And uh, yeah, that was a good chill, man. If you don't like that, yeah, um, I don't know what to tell you. That's an awesome <laughs> finish to a, to a pretty darn good race. Yeah, I don't know door, how you could make that better. Banging door handles to the start finish line, a tenth or a hundredth of a second, one of the closest in history. But you know, back at, at Phoenix at a flat track, yeah, too, where, flat you know, track, we're not exactly. known for that type of racing. But uh, yeah, I think it's the field's as competitive as ever. I mean, there's there's 20 cars that you can throw a blank over every week, and um, you know, it's a uh, I just the it's that's why when Joey and and Eddie DeHunt we were talking before the race and Joey said you're gonna take it easy on us or I, I someone did I don't think it was Joey but I'm yeah. like man I don't know everybody's so close now um, and that's the way it is every week you you cannot afford to be off a little bit or uh, it'll show up for sure yeah finishing up with Timmy Fito a winning spotter yesterday for Kevin Harvick he got one win in the bank. Uh, assumingly everything, if the chase started now, we got to oh, say it at least once. Goes. <laughs> you guys are in the chase. Uh, a relatively quiet year so far with uh, a fourth, sixth, seventh, and then a win. But we talk about this being a team sport. We did have a West Coast swing, uh, a little incident in snowmobiling. Give us an update on your shot guy. How's he doing? Yeah, you mentioned I, that earlier. Yeah, he's home. I mean, I was right behind him when he wrecked. You know, it was one of them deals where, you know, I didn't think it was – it was that bad until he got down there and, and I was trying to talk to him and I think he just landed wrong and, and broke some ribs and collapsed the lung. So it was, it was really serious. Um, but he's doing good. He's at home. And I, he was the first person to text. I got, got down off the spotter stand and I, my phone was going off and I looked down and it was no, he said, that's my boy. So, um, <laughs> he's happy after it made him feel a lot better. Absolutely. That's the best medicine in the world. Well, Tim, we we appreciate your time. Congratulations on the big win and uh, look forward to seeing you out at Auto Club Speedway.
look forward to it, guys. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, Timmy. There you go. How about that? And uh, uh, we mentioned that during the practice coverage uh, for Motor Racing Network, and you can check that out, too, during the weekends that we're doing the races. We stream practice coverage live on the MRN app. You can get it free at the iTunes store or at uh, Google Play. But uh, that was one of the things we talked about. And uh, one of the other things was how much grief the rest of the guys were going to give him when he gets back. Well, they did it uh, – not in spite of the shot guy. No, no, no. Yeah, they did it uh, in memory or in mm-hmm. honor of, of his, his work because it was all his work in practice in the past year. Uh, he's been there a long time mm-hmm. uh, working with Rodney and Kevin and, and Tim. Those guys have been very, very solid team. Very little turnover. You know, it's interesting uh, with successful teams, there's, there are teams in the garage that are known to get rid of guys because they want fresh meat. Mm-hmm. Uh, the 48 comes into mind. There's only three of those guys or two of those guys that have been on all the teams. Mm-hmm. They want guys in. They want new guys in with – with different and fresh outlooks. And then there's other teams, uh, kind of like our team, uh, you know, with Paul and, and Jerry, those guys, we've been together a very long time. The four cars since Rodney went over there, they've been together, you know, now going on three, four years. So, mm-hmm. And that's, uh, that's a long time in this sport. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we all have a, a little bit of an expiration date on us. Mm-hmm. Uh, Where, the, where's yeah, where's well, yours? <laughs> yeah. I, won't, I won't show you mine. On, okay, yeah, yeah, good. That's a better idea. So – for the shot guy to go out and, and during a during a team camaraderie building event get mm-hmm. hurt, you feel really bad. And like you say, it's it's a, a luck of the draw because Timmy, we said, was right behind him on a snowmobile. didn't look that bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we see it happen. We saw it happen earlier in the year with Tony Stewart, uh, an innocent uh, bystander, if you will, just mm-hmm. having good times. All right, there you go. That's a wrap on the uh, cup side at uh, Phoenix. On the way out of the break, we got on track, off track coming back on the other side. But on the way out, Kevin Harvick was asked why he's so dominant at Phoenix. You mentioned three and four was your weak spot here at Phoenix, but yet you win so many times. How do you make up for that? Well, sometimes it's our strong, strong, strong point. You just never know, and we've raced so many different packages here. It just kind of moves and shifts around uh, what, what the balance is and the package and all the things that, that uh, you have to adjust to. So today it was, it was much different than it has been in the past because you could move the car around again. Uh, you could run the apron, but the ra- apron got rubbered up and got slick, and then it went back to the yellow line. Uh, but on the restarts, you wanted to be on the top. So, you know, there's just a lot of things moving and, and going on. This is MRN Motorsports Monday. Whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules Tires will get you there. Whether you're running on dirt or running a job. Our dependable, high-quality tires are the perfect fit for your needs. For unmatched value, selection, and warranty with industry-leading road hazard protection, there's only one choice, Hercules Tires. To learn more, visit HerculesTire.com or call 800-677-9535. Hercules Tires, right on our strength. Waking up to smells of burnt rubber, smoldering campfire, and barbecue sauce. I was there. Cheering on the drivers you love and booing the ones you don't while watching them battle the baddest track in NASCAR. You can bet I was there. Escape reality for a weekend at Talladega. Experience the Geico 500 April 29th through May 1st. Call 877-GO-TO-DEGA or visit talladegasuperspeedway.com. In the Outback, we think the best part about racing is the noise, the engine, the pits, and a Kevin Harvick top 10 finish, especially a Kevin Harvick top 10 finish. Mm. That's because if Kevin Happy Harvick, driver of the number four Chevrolet, places in the top 10 in today's race, there's free Bloomin' Onions this Monday. So you'll have a happy Bloomin' Monday, only at Outback Steakhouse. Valid with any purchase, one per table, participation may vary, registered trademarks used with permission. I'm Justin Allgaier, and you're listening to MRN Motorsports Monday with Joey Meyer and Woody Kane. It's Joey. I mean, I feel like Joey gets enough abuse. I'll leave it alone. Uh, How can he be nice to you like that? I guess we just had him on the show. show. Yeah, 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 okay. He's all right. right. All right, Justin, we'll take it. Every once in a while, somebody is nice to us. It actually does happen. I don't mind. It's... There's only a few people that don't listen to this show that aren't nice to us. Absolutely right. Hey, uh, you can play along with us on Twitter as we go. Mine is at WYKane. His is at 2, the number 2 spotter. Use that hashtag AskMRN so we can find your question. And we've got one here from Mr. Y. Noel Bandit who wants to know, uh, let's see here, what is your favorite place to eat in your hometown area? And I've got a suggestion for you. You know, Outback is one of our sponsors now. And did you know that they have... In addition to all kinds of great steaks and seafood and you name it, they have a Joey 
menu. And I think Very that's nice. perfect for you. Does I'm scrolling right? through it right here. I think you should go today and get a grilled cheese macaroo and cheese, maybe some junior ribs along the way, and then you can pick a bunch of sides and mix and match and make your own deal. But Joey menu, it's perfect for you. So we are in March. We've gone four races, uh, been two 12-day trips with Daytona being long and two out west. My favorite sandwich that I've had this year has been a grilled cheese with lobster. What? Like, Where'd you get that? It was down in Daytona. It was a grilled lobster and cheese sandwich. That yeah. sounds really fantastic. It was really, really good. Sounds really fantastic. Yeah, really good. But yeah, All I right. got my own menu. It's pretty cool. I, I know they did that in honor of you. Absolutely. Really, it's for kids, but I bet they would let you order off of it if you if you ask them really nicely. Maybe I'll, take Justin with you. I'll share. Here you go. We both look like kids. I got the hairline. <laughs> I got the same. We do. You don't have the I Gerber the baby look. Is that what we got going on? I've here? got the okay. same hairline I did when yeah. I was four. No, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. All right. I'm with you there. Me too. All right. It's time to talk on track, off track. And for you folks who are new to the program, this is where we talk about some things we believe are going right in the sport and some things maybe not going quite so well. Let's start with you. What's on track for Joey Meyer besides the Joey menu? 2016 has. Uh, well, let's back up a little bit. 1984, we had one of the best draft classes of quarterbacks with Elway and Marino uh, and Jim Kelly and things of that nature. 2016 will be remembered as one of the greatest uh, rookie classes that the Sprint Cup Series is putting out right now with Ryan Blaney, Chris Buescher, Jeffrey Earnhardt, Chase Elliott, and Brian Scott all in uh, different phases of their career but they're all doing exactly what they need to do. Jeffrey Earnhardt not running a full-time series, but running mm -hmm. a, a, a mostly schedule, uh, most of the year schedule, sharing mm -hmm. it with other, doing exactly what he needs to do, getting in the races, uh, limited cup time, finishing, not wrecking. Uh, the Chris Bushers of the world, uh, nationwide series champion, the Xfinity series champion last go. year, thank you, uh, doing exactly what he needs to do in a Roush car. Those guys are looking better and better. But the battle that Ryan Blaney and Chase Elliott are putting on uh, every week, we got two of the rookies in the top ten. We got Ryan Blaney in the top fifteen in points. Which, if the chase started now, mm, he would be in it. the chase. Exactly Without right. Without a charter, how about Without that? Without a charter, and the simple fact that you just go back and look at the equipment they're in, the drivers, whether it's Brian Scott and for RPM, everybody is doing exactly what they want to do, uh, how they need to do it for being a rookie. You know, they're, we want a yellow stripe to identify when you pull up on that car. Oh, I got a rookie in front of me in mm -hmm. case the guys didn't know that. But it's a symbol that they're utilizing this year. They're competing for a rookie of the year. In past, some of our rookie of the year uh, ch chases were terrible. We had one driver. He mm -hmm. just showed up, didn't matter what he did, uh, and the rules were he won the rookie of the year. That's not a battle. We have a really good uh, competitive battle for rookie of the year and i think we'll remember 2016 for that for a long time here's a factoid i don't know if you saw this or not but nascar said yesterday that the race at phoenix on sunday was the first time uh, since uh, 2014 kansas that two rookies have finished top 10 chase elliott was eighth ryan blaney was 10th and ryan rode around 12th 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 right there at the end and on that final overtime start he got by a couple guys and made it into the top 10 so kudos to both those guys sitting 12th in points after a disastrous couple of weeks ago was ryan running around top 15, had a great mm -hmm. afternoon, and just got caught up in a wreck coming to the checker. Yeah. Had nothing of his doing. So he's easily easily in the top 10 of points if that doesn't happen. Absolutely he is. For on track for me, I would like to talk about Goodyear. We mentioned it earlier, the new tire that they had at Phoenix along the way with uh, both the Xfinity and Cup Series running the same tire. We mentioned earlier that a lot of the problems were due to the low downforce package setups causing guys to try and compensate, melting the beads on the tires. Not a problem with the tires itself. Mm -hmm. Saturday in the Xfinity Series race, I was up and down pit road, and the one thing I saw was some buildup on the tires, which is to be expected when a lot of rubber has been laid down. But no issues there at all, really. And I think Goodyear's done an outstanding job to try and match a softer tire, which the guys want. They want that tire to fall off a little bit so it's more in their hands. They're managing a run like we saw with Kevin Harvick. If you burn your tires up early, you're not going to have anything for the end of a run. They did a great job with what we had at Vegas, even though there were very cool conditions during the test. You guys went to that. I think they're doing a good job with trying to match what we have with what they know we need. Yeah, years ago, Darlington was only the track that the tires wore out. You ran five, six, seven laps, caution came out, you put tires back on. Now we're seeing more and more of that. When the caution comes out after 10, 15, possibly 20 laps at the most, mm -hmm. guys are going to come down pit road and strategize whether we're just going to take fuel only or two tires or four tires. The guys that put on more tires, whether it's two tires or four, 
are simply faster than the guys that didn't. Mm -hmm. So if I stayed out and took none and you took two, your car is faster. Mm -hmm. If I took four and you took two, I'm faster. And that's what you want. strategy, yeah. Exactly. That's what you want. Uh, Last year's tires was so hard and the amount of downforce, I could stay out and I had the advantage, even though I was on older tires, but simply by being out front. We're getting away from that more and more and more. I would like to see less downforce. A lot of the drivers have talked about less mm-hmm. downforce. Mm-hmm. Phoenix is one of those places. There were still these little air bubbles, uh, pockets around the car that when you got to, your car handled a little worse. Uh, by getting rid of some of the downforce, we can alleviate that and even make the racing better. Absolutely. I think you're right. We'll see it more and more as we go along. Okay, how about off track for you? <sighs> oh, he, Uh-oh. A deep sigh is never a good sign. Do we really need daylight savings time? Well, Arizona doesn't participate. (laughs) How do we just not participate? Why can't we just not participate? Like, just keep, we all want it to be. Can you choose as an individual not to participate? Right, that's my point. But then you're late for work. We all want it to be darker early and lighter later. Mm -hmm. So we get home from work because most of us in the country have eight to five jobs. We want to get home and, and play with the dog and play with the kids and do our yard work and still have daylight left over. Yep. Let's just keep it like this and not switch back and forth. Let's just keep it. This is, it's just it's coming. It's time. It was good back in the day mm-hmm. before electricity, you know, for the farmers. So are you saying this is another thing that NASCAR has ruined? I, I've been trying to, <laughs> I'm I'm trying to find I'm a way. Teasing, yeah. I'm trying to find a way to blame it on Kyle Busch in the Xfinity Series. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. All right, well, that leads to mine then. All right, here we go with the Xfinity Series. Mine is it's it's kind of a double standard because fans, on the one hand, want to see the Stars win. They want to see the best in the sport do well. On the other hand, you see in the Xfinity Series when cup guys come down, we see a lot of outrage and people saying, Joey told me I had to do it like this. Oh, we don't want the cup guys winning. They're ruining everything. From a fan standpoint, I get it. You don't want the same guy running away, stinking up the show every time. From a competitor standpoint, here's the problem. A guy like a Kyle Busch, a guy like a Brad Keselowski, we talked about this many times. In order to get a sponsor to pay the bills, they're going to say, okay, we'll write you the check, Kyle, Brad, If you guys drive the the car, truck, X amount of times, they're fulfilling that, and it gives them the opportunity to then on the other side of it put a younger guy uh, at the wheel and give him a chance to to progress and move through the the ranks. And Eric Jones comes to mind for an example. That is the rub. Uh, Also, the tracks want to have star power to help sell tickets to these Xfinity races. I get that point. The, from a fan's perspective, it's mm-hmm. difficult to sit there and watch and think, okay, well, when Kyle Busch shows up, man, it's, he's going to stink up the show. We know it's not going to be any fun. Why do I want to watch this? Then you listen to Justin Allgaier. We had him on the show earlier. He says, bring him on. We want to race him. All I want to do is have the fans tell the truth and be honest. Wait, okay? what? 2008 and 2009 in the old Xfinity series, which was known at Nationwide. Do you know who was the most popular driver? In the, ser- in the Xfinity series? Mm-hmm. Who? Brad Keselowski. 2008 and 2009, hmm. voted most popular driver. He's easily one of the top three most booed drivers now in the Sprint Cup Series. You think he's made the top three? Yeah, I think okay. it's. I think right. Joey, him, and Kyle are still the. I think I don't know of anybody else. Mm-hmm. My point being is, why did he become most popular driver? Because he was winning, probably. No, nah, he drove for Junior Motorsports. Ah, that's it. Drove for you. Junior yeah. Motorsports. Okay. So the issue that I have and the double standard I have, I get that they use a, there's a business model problem. I get it mm-hmm. because you have the haves and the have-nots, and mm-hmm. there's a very large gradient there. But for the haves, the reason they have haves is they have successful drivers with successful sponsors that are associated with them, and they're competing. At, and in, don't forget successful equipment. That doesn't yeah, hurt absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But we've, we've seen this pattern for 25, 30 years. The Mark Martins, the Harry Gantz, the Dale Earnhardt's, the Dale Jarrett's, blah, blah, blah. We can go on and on and on. Mm-hmm. If it were anybody else except for Brad, Joey, Kyle, and you took a handful of other cup drivers and you ran every race – and a cup driver won every race in the series, and it wasn't Kyle, Brad, Joey, the guys that are being booed, but they were the most popular drivers. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't hear this argument. So the so you're, argument, you're saying you're saying if, if Dale Jr. wins five Xfinity races this year, people would be fine with it. You're not going to hear the argument. Yeah. I, I will. I, 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 it's hard to disagree. We didn't hear it. The year didn't start out with, oh, no, not again. Here we go. The Cup drivers winning an Xfinity race. Mm-hmm. You know who won first and second? It was Chase Elliott and Joey Logano. We didn't hear a word. 
-hmm. but we're four races in because Kyle Busch is simply waxing their butts, and I get it. He's good. Joe Gibbs Racing is good. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's the bottom line. You put anybody in those cars, we see Eric Jones and Daniel Suarez, they're competing at a high level. It's just the fact that Kyle Busch isn't the most popular guy. Yeah, Neither is yeah, Brad. I don't disagree with that's, that at all. That's all yeah. I'm going at. So let's be honest. And what's the real problem? Uh, if you get a chance, you can see my Twitter handle. I was able to retweet Dave Moody had a fantastic article. It's not a Xfinity Series problem. It's a Kyle Busch problem. Yeah, I would And agree. he's not doing anything wrong. No, he's not. That's exactly that's, what he's supposed to that's do. That's what we're asking. Just be honest. Let's just say we don't like Kyle Busch. Mm -hmm. I have no – I love the guy. I've been very fortunate. He drove a modified for Kevin Mannion back in the day. We rode around, got to know him very well off behind the scenes, and it's mm -hmm. a different person. This guy that's the most hated guy, it's like booing Jimmy Johnson. for. He's the most uh, – <laughs> Okay. Anyways. All right, easy, easy. Back up there. But, Think about the Joey menu. You'll be fine. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We wanted to play one clip for you. We get ready to go to break here, but we wanted to talk about this for just a second first. Kevin Harvick, uh, after the race, talking about – the low downforce package, we mentioned the Goodyear tires, we mentioned the low downforce package, the whys and the wherefores. Here's what yesterday's winner had to say about it. With the new low downforce package here at Phoenix, the new tire Goodyear brought here as well, your assessment of this package? Well, I think it's definitely put a lot back into our hands. I think uh, driving the race car is, is definitely, uh, you know, you have a lot more things that you can do and adjust to. So I think as a sport, I think we're headed in the right direction with this package and you just have to keep, keep working on the tire and, and different things to keep making it better. Congratulations on yet another one. Thank you. That's Kevin Harvick. He's won the Good Sam 500 at Phoenix. Keep working on the tire to make it match. I think we'll see even more of this at Auto Club, but I think we're on the right track. You know, it's interesting at Goodyear. Uh, a lot of the drivers go there for a, uh, a tour of the plant up in Ohio. The tires are still handmade. Mm -hmm. They're still handmade. So to be that, we, we see variations during the race of a Goodyear tire. They're handmade. Mm -hmm. That's what's amazing. In this not, day and age, yeah. Yeah, it's not. They're not just <laughs> just being put together with <laughs> a machine. Giant machine, yeah. yeah. They're handmade. They're in Ohio. Absolutely, it's uh, something to keep an eye on as well. A lot of the drivers yesterday at Phoenix talking about they can't wait to get to Auto Club Speedway in Southern California to see how this tire performs out there. That track is really coming into its own in terms of the surface. Should see some outstanding racing as well. One more segment here on Motorsports Monday. We'll get to a couple of your calls from during the week and look ahead to this weekend. Race. Stick around, everyone. This is MRN Motorsports Monday. Ready to take the training wheels off your race scanner? Go to fanvision.com and upgrade your experience with FanVision. Not only will you be able to hear the race, Dale Earnhardt Jr. gets a good run, drafting help from Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick. Jr. again pulls up alongside for the race lead. You'll see every moment through live video, instant replays, live stats, and more. Hi, I'm Jamie McMurray, driver of the number one McDonald Chevrolet. And I never go to the track without my fan vision. So go to fanvision.com to rent or buy yours today. Here comes the speed, the five wide around turn one at 215 miles per hour. Here comes the crowds, the speed freaks, the gearheads, and the race hungry. Here comes three days of heart pounding NASCAR thrills. The action begins Friday, March 18th with three intense group knockout rounds of NASCAR qualifying at the 5.11 Tactical Pole Day. The drivers then face off on Saturday at the NXS 300 NASCAR Xfinity Series. Then, on March 20th, NASCAR's best go head-to-head -head in the weekend's final showdown, the Auto Club 400. Three-car breakaway up at the front, final time into turn one. This is your one chance to see your favorite NASCAR drivers, like Jimmy Johnson and Dale Jr. Here comes the rumble. Here comes the fast. Here comes the room. For tickets and more information, visit autoclubspeedway.com or call 800-944-RACE. I'm Michael Lynette, and you're listening to MRN Motorsports Monday with Joey Meyer and Woody King. Wait, who? I would like to know the difference between the engines in the Xfinity Series cars and the Sprint Series cars. Somebody told me the Xfinity Series cars are running V6s. I, I don't find that hard to believe, but I don't know. But, yeah, I would like to know the difference, horsepower, et cetera. Yeah, there you go from our fan forum hotline, 844 uh, The Ask MRN there. Uh, Joey, what, they used to run the V6s, but not anymore. Yeah, we haven't run V6s since the early 90s, I believe. Uh, mm -hmm. Both running V8s, 358 cubic inches. 
the Xfinity Series runs a carburetor with a tapered spacer. It's not a restrictor plate, but, but it serves the same purpose. It's a smaller tapered down to the to limit the airflow to reduce horsepower. We're in the 700 horsepower range. The on cu- the cup side. No, on, on the, the Xfinity, Xfinity side. Yeah. side. The cup cars now are running a s- similar tapered spacer with electronic fuel injection, and they're putting out over 800 horsepower. There you go. That's the difference. Looking forward to Auto Club Speedway coming up. A couple of notes. Don't forget, we'll replay Sunday's race from Phoenix right after this program. And tomorrow at 2, you can be a part of having uh, a conversation with Brian Vickers on NASCAR Live. You can check that out here on the Motor Racing Network, and we'll record that a little bit earlier. So be with us then. I'm Woody. He's Joey. We'll see you next week right back here on Motor Sports. Been listening to MRN Motorsports Monday, presented by Outback Steakhouse and Hercules Tires. Tune in again next Monday at noon for all the latest news, results, and interviews from NASCAR on MotorRacingNetwork.com. MRN Motorsports Monday is also available on demand at the MotorRacingNetwork.com Media Center or download it from iTunes or Stitcher. MRN Motorsports Monday is a production of the Motor Racing Network. All rights reserved.